What is up, guys? Welcome to Season 3, Week 1 of the GBA D-League. We are taking on Papa C and his New York Clinks. We are connecting up right now. As you can see, the uh, layout for the uh, video is a little bit different than the team builder. I actually have my mons up on the left uh, with the sprites and uh, the six that I think he's going to bring on the right side. Uh, he's deciding the battle rules right now, but I have my calc open. I have my notes open. Everything's ready to go. Uh, I was a little bit nervous for this game uh, a couple of minutes ago, but we've had to restart the recording a couple of times because uh, Papa C had a few issues. But uh, I'm just going to set the music to the one I want, which is this one, participating team. We are going to pick this one, and let's go. And we're about to find out which team he is bringing. So let's go. Battle begin. And we will pick our six. Let's see what he's got. So, his six Pokemon are... Alright, Skarmory, Hoopa, Sylveon, Manaphy, Tauros, and Sandslash. Okay, so no Mega Pidgeot, and no Haxorus. So, no Haxorus. Instead, he brought Tauros and Sandslash. Interesting. So, we'll just bring these over here. Um, why can't I move this? Sandslash... Get over here. There we go. There's the Sand Slash. And we'll bring the Tauros over here. So, a little less than what I expected, actually. It's a little bit strange. Uh, I'm going to change it on the notes after. But looking at his team, I think that leading with Quillfish in this case is not bad. Because it deals well with pretty much everything. So, we are going to do that. We're going to lead with Quillfish. My intention was to lead with, um, with Umbreon initially, but... If he didn't bring the Mega Pidgeot, then Umbreon's only role is to take on the Hoopa at this point. So that's exactly what it's going to do. Uh, choice Scarf, yep, yeah, this and this, and let's get into it. Alright, so we got our six selected. We are leading with Bakugo, the Quillfish. Get off that Intimidate early, and uh, get up a Toxic Spike if possible. He might lead with his Sand Slash, in which case I will just uh, cleanly switch out into my Mega Blastoise, and we'll get off the Rapid Spin if he tries to get up rocks. So here we go. We are ready. This white screen is a little bit annoying, but there we go. All right, so you are challenged by Pokemon Trainer Bill. Ready to go. The sound is lagging a little bit. I do notice that. That's annoying. But we are gonna lead off with Bakugo against the Hoopa, so this is great. Uh, I do have the Fell Stinger on here. Now, of course, this Hoopa might be mixed and minus defense nature, in which case it would drop instantly. Uh, to my Fell Stinger. I just want to see something. Quillfish, uh, Bakugo. So, Fell Stinger. Uh, it's not on the calc. We'll have to bring up Lunge uh, and put it at base 50. So, this does 90 to 108, which is really nice. Um, so, I don't need to conserve my Sash against this kind of team, realistically. So, I am just going to go for the Fell Stinger immediately. Uh, let's see what he does. He might predict it and switch out into Skarmory, but I do have the Taunt for Skarm, so I'm not as worried about it. Uh, surprising switch-ins would be something like Sylveon or Tauros. Um, most obvious switch-ins are going to be Skarmory or Sandslash. So. But I could go for a water move, so I don't think Sandslash is going to come in here. We'll see what he does. We'll see if he's Scarfed as well. It would be nice to find out. He is Scarfed. Let's see if he flinches us. He's going to go for the Zen Headbutt. That's going to bring me down close to my Sash. I do not get, um, all right, we're going to knock out the Hoopa immediately. Awesome. We get a crit. Oh, that's, that's pretty huge because the roll is 90 to 108 on a standard Hoopa set and we're going to get the attack boost. And the only thing that should be faster than me is going to be Tauros. Manaphy might, but I doubt it. And Manaphy is easily revenged by Thunderous. So that was a Scarfed Hoopa. We're going to write Scarf right here. Scarf. And, uh, we're going to change Mega Pidgeot to Tauros. And Haxorus to Sand Slash. So, Sand... Sand Slash. Alright, so we're ready with that. I'm also going to take notes on who killed who. So, Quillfish kills Hoopa immediately, which is nice. He is going to go into his Tauros. I do not see the... Um, I do not see the Intimidate, which tells me Sheer Force. Uh, how well does Blair take on Tauros? Tauros default set. Um, return does 43 to 50 to me. 
How much wood? Hold on, ability, sheer force. Uh, let's see, what's the move called? It's called uh, Rock Climb. Rock Climb does 49 to 58, so I can definitely take two after the Leftovers Recovery and Protect. So I think my play is to switch into Blair, because Blair's only function was to kill off the Hoopa. The Hoopa, which is now dead, of course, so let me take that off the layout. Um, I can still bring in my Quillfish later to get off an Intimidate on either the Sand Slash or this Tauros. So I kind of want to keep it. And uh, we got rid of one potential Scarfer. I don't know if he has more. This Tauros could be Scarfed, which is something that I was worried about. Because I did EV my Thunderous and my uh, my Scarfed Infernape to only outspeed Manaphy. So, yeah. Um, so let's switch into Blair. Let's see what he does. I think uh, that's the appropriate play here. I do want to keep my Quillfish alive because it does check the Sylveon, it checks the uh, Skarmory with Taunt, and I can get up a T-Spike later, which would be nice. So he does go for the Rock Climb. Let's see what kind of um, Tauros he is. That does seem to be Life Orb, as we are going to get some Leftovers Recovery. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let's adjust the size of OBS here. I think the glitching on the sound stopped. Uh, I don't know why I can't adjust the size anymore. That's weird. Where is it? There it is. Uh, there you are. Okay. All right. So um, that rock climb was a pretty high roll, considering. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you guys my secret weapon. There we go. Um, <laughs> so we have a little bit of a calc here. Uh, we're going to, I think, just play it safe and go for protect. Uh, Tauros, to my knowledge, doesn't get any kind of setup. Um, if I recall correctly, Tauros, do you get uh, Swords Dance or Bulk Up or Work Up? You do get Work Up, but I'm not worried about that. I doubt you'd bring that. Uh, so we're just going to Protect here and see uh, what he does. We do get off the Protect, and he's going to go for a Rock Climb again. Cool, that's fine. I do Protect myself. Rock Climb does have a chance to miss as well, uh, if I remember correctly. Rock Climb is 85% accurate, so yeah, it does. Uh, and you can't confuse me either, so... Uh, 116 out of 202, that's something I should have done, was brought up a calculator. Uh, 116 out of 202 is 57.4%, uh, and right now he's doing a max of 584 So there's a very good chance that I live this. I'm just going to go for the Wish right here. As he goes for another Rock Climb, he does connect. Let's see if he takes us out. He does. Wow, okay. So I think he got the max roll there. Unless he's adamant. That's like the only way that he would have knocked me out otherwise. So I can go into uh, Infernape here. I can go into... Metagross is not safe because I think he gets Earthquake, right? Yeah, he does get Earthquake. Um, Thunderous isn't bad. I like Infernape and U-Turn into my Quillfish. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Switch in Infernape. So he can't be Scarfed. He has to be Life Orb because the, the Calc is saying Life Orb. Uh, I guess he could also be Banded, but I don't know why you would bring Banded uh, when you can bring Life Orb Sheer Force. So we're just going to go for the U-Turn right here and get out against this thing. So I do have the Mock Punch on deck for this later, which is nice. Uh, that's a nice cleaning move. We are just going to go for the U-Turn, and uh, if his Sylveon comes in, then that's great because we get up a T-Spike and we're able to wear down the Sylveon, the uh, Manaphy, the Sand Slash, and this Tauros. So he is going to go into his Sand Slash, actually. Let's see if he's Rocky Helmet. Uh, we are going to get off the U-Turn. Has um, does a good amount. Brings him down to about 80%, uh, 85-ish. So that did 15. Um, so we can go into... Very easily go into Blastoise here. I think that's going to be my play. Just go into Blastoise. Because we are physically defensive. So we can just go for a Scald on the following turn. Try to get a burn off on the Sylveon. I would much rather a... I would much rather uh, a poison on it. I could predict him to go into Sylveon as seeing as it's one of his only safe plays and just go for the um, the double out into Quillfish. The problem is if he goes into Manaphy, I'm in a bad, uh, I'm in a bad spot. So we're going to Mega Evolve. Um, we are going to go for the Scald straight away. I'm not playing games with this thing. I actually want to calc the damage. Uh, Infernape. Uh, Ace versus Sand Slash. Sand Slash. Uh, where are you? Default set. Uh, U-turn supposed to do 20-ish. Uh, that did... That's the 75 mark. 80, 85. So that did 15. So I think he's max HP. Uh, he's more than max HP. He's actually pretty physically defensive. He's going to go into a Sylveon. We're going to see the damage right here from Blastoise. Uh, Blastoise, Gamagori. 
Mega Blastoise versus Sylveon. Default. Uh, so this is the this is actually a max special attack set that I have on the calc right now. Uh, that's gonna do quite a bit actually. That's gonna be a crit. Uh, he's gonna get some leftovers. A crit did a little over 30%. Um, so about 28. So I think he has a lot of spadef investment actually. Yeah, because my skull should have done more. So let's see. Modest. Let's see calm. Yeah, I think he's uh, I think he's calm. I think he's max spadef calm based on the calc. So I'm just going to switch out directly into my Metagross here. I want to get up rocks, and I also want to get up a light screen if possible. I don't think Quillfish is uh, the right. I don't think this is the right time for Quillfish yet uh, to come back in and get up Toxic Spikes because I really feel like he would hyper voice. You might have forgotten that I'm at. Uh, I also have to write down Sand Slash is at uh, eighty percent. So yeah, I think we're gonna go into Metagross hard here. So switch. There we go. Let's see what he does. He might go for a Wish. That would be fine. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, we'll get up rocks, and we'll play in consequence. So we are going to go into Metagross, as uh, he's going to go for a Hyper Voice. Uh, it is leftover, so it's not going to do too much to me. Uh, it's going to do maybe like 10, 15%-ish. After the leftovers, I should be okay. And he's not going to want to stay in on a Meteor Mash here, so I think I'm just going to go straight for the uh, the Stealth Rocks. And we'll get those up. His Sylveon is sitting uh, a little over 75%, 80-ish. So, um... 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, yeah, so 80%. Uh, Sylveon is also at 80%. There we go. All right, so we're just going to get up our rocks as early as possible here. Let's go for that. He is going to withdraw his Sylveon and uh, bring in Alphonse of his own. We're both Alphonse. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> we named both our steel types Alphonse. That's great. All right, so we are going to get up the rocks against the Skarmory. And uh, we are going to heal up a little bit more. Now, I do have the Thunder Punch for this thing. Um, obviously, he has his Sturdy Intact. And Thunder Punch doesn't do a tremendous amount to Skarm. I uh, just want to see Skarmory, default. Uh, if it's physically defensive, my Metagross... I think I still 3 hit KO, though. Um, Thunder Punch does 32 to 38. So we're going to find out what kind of Skarmory this is immediately. As he's going to go for Stealth Rocks, he's actually faster than me. And I, sp I sped crept Skarmory a little bit, which means this thing has a lot of speed. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to get off the Thunder Punch here. And that's going to do a solid amount, about 40%. Uh, and he has Rocky Helmet. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's good to know. Um, so, Manaphy is a little bit of a threat at this point because I don't have my Umbreon anymore. I did explain that I needed Umbreon to uh, be able to deal with Manaphy to some extent. So, he can't switch it in here, though. He can't switch it in safely. So, I'm just going to go for the light screen at this point. As uh, He's probably going to roost, I would imagine, at this point. I've already crit him twice. I, I bet he thinks that I can't crit him again, so... Uh, we are going to go for the light screen. I do expect the roost on this turn, and then I'll probably switch into my Blastoise. Um, he's going to whirlwind me straight away. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's cool. Just don't get Quillfish, please. Get Blastoise. Alright, we're going to get uh, Thunderous. That's not too bad, actually, because he doesn't have good responses to this. As uh, we're going to take Rock's damage, which is fine. I don't mind that too much. And we are Expert Belt. Um, now, I can go for the HP Ice predicting the Sand Slash. Because I think it's very physically defensive. Uh, it's also pretty low. Let me see something. Sand Slash. Sand Slash. Where are you again? There you are. Versus my Thunderous. How much do I do to you? 83 to 98 to no spit F. Um, and if you have max HP which I think you are. 71 to 85, we uh, established that it's at 80%. So I think that Thunderbolt is pretty safe, actually. Um, and I'm just going to fire it off here. I know he has the Sand Slash, but it's fine. We should be okay against that thing. In comes Knuckles, the Sand Slash. Okay. That is going to come in. It's going to take a little bit of chip damage from the rocks. And he's going to end up just over 75. Actually, now he's at 80. Okay. All right. So my HP Ice can do a lot of damage to him. Um, I really want to keep this, though. I don't want him knocking me out. So I think what I'm going to do is now is the time to sack my Quillfish. Uh, get in my Blastoise, Rapid Spin, and then we should be okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to switch into Bakugo, the Quillfish. It's going to go down to Rocks, which is fine. He might predict it and switch out, uh, which would be a decent play. Or predicting the HP Ice, either one, really. Um, he might think I'm choiced as well. Which is, uh, 
which would be a conclusion. There we go. So we're going to switch out into Bakugo. We're not going to get off the Intimidate because unfortunately we do go down to Rocks. But uh, that's going to leave his Sand Slash in a pretty bad position, actually. As he's going to go for the Rapid Spin and he doesn't have a target. So my Rocks are going to stay up. As I'm going to get in my uh, Blastoise and I'm going to spin. I'm just going to straight spin. I don't care if he stays in and spins himself. It really doesn't matter. I still have my Metagross. So we are just going to Rapid Spin right here. And uh, I'm pretty convinced that his Skarmory doesn't have much HP investment. Um, how fast is my Blastoise, actually? Let's check that. Blastoise. Uh, I don't have any speed investment, so I think his Skarmory actually outspeeds me. Which is an issue. The Sand Slash shouldn't, though. Uh, in theory. With zero, it hits 85. Yeah, his Sand Slash definitely shouldn't. So he might just want to spin here. Should be a decent play. I'm working toward the end game, uh, Infernape Sweep. That's what I'm looking at here. In comes Nui, Nui Harime. From, uh, <laughs> yep, I know where that's from. That is from, uh, Kill a Kill. Alright, so we're going to get rid of the rocks, which is nice, as he's going to heal up a little bit with leftovers. And basically what I'm going to do at this point is, I think I'm just going to Scald, and then Roar on the following turn. So we have a chance to, we can't get up T-Spikes anymore, unfortunately. So I'm just going to go for the Scald. I'm going to get off a little bit of damage on the Sylveon. And uh, then we're going, we're going to Roar. Because I don't want a Sylveon catching the Wish. Nor do I want whatever he wants to catch the Wish to catch it. So Roaring is always the best play at that point. So we are going to get off the Scald right here. We are going to Scald this uh, Sylveon and burn it, which is nice. Uh, he's going to get off a Wish. And like I said, I'm just going to Roar just to make sure the Sylveon stays low, so that it can't come in on repeated close combats and whatnot. Uh, and the fact that it's pretty specially defensive uh, is also a great help to me. So, we are going to get off this Roar right here. My Light Screen is going to wear off, that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go for the Roar. Uh, he can hit me with a Hyper Voice, which would be not so great, but as long as he doesn't get back up his rocks, I should be okay. So we're just going to Roar. Let's see what he does. I doubt he would Hyper Voice because I did show... Okay, well, he actually does. Uh, I did show my... Um, I did show my Metagross to be my switch in to his Sylveon, so he is going to stay in. I'm going to roar him out. Something else is going to catch the Wish, and it's going to be Sand Slash. Uh, this thing does have Sturdy, I believe, but... Uh, does that get broken? No, it doesn't get broken by the rocks. Okay, so he's going to get off a successful Rapid Spin here if he does stay in. However, he's going to lose his Sand Slash, which is going to make Thunderbolt spamming really, really easy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to Scald. We're going to bring this thing down to its sturdy, and uh, then I think we're just going to Scald again, honestly. So I have my Scarfed Infernape to deal with most variants of Manaphy. As long as he doesn't get up a Z-Rain Dance, uh, I'm good to go. So as long as my Blastoise is alive and I can roar him out, essentially, that's going to be the game plan. And I think my Metagross is still healthy enough to take, um, to take a plus three um, Surf from Manaphy. If it gets up the plus three with Surf. Uh, so we're going to knock this uh, Sand Slash down pretty low. He is going to go for the Rapid Spin. That's fine. Uh, as my Blastoise is now sitting at just under half. And I just want to see if Manaphy's plus three Surf. Uh, plus three Max Invested. Um, let's see if he's Modest. So Manaphy's plus three Surf normally does 86%. But if I'm behind a Light Screen, then I should be good to go, right? Does 57 max. Okay, that's not too bad. Alright, so, um, he does have one Scald switch in, which is his Manaphy, essentially. And, um, we're just gonna go for the Scald, honestly. Because, uh, Sylveon doesn't come in on it anymore and whatnot. So, he can attempt to get up his rocks again. Uh, if he doesn't get off damage on my Blastoise, though, that's not looking good for him. And I'm slower than his uh, Skarmory, so he can't spam rocks against me. Which is good. So we're down to, um, what is it, four Mons. We lost Bakugo and Blair. We have Gamagori, Ace, and Ru, and Alphonse left. So we should be okay. I think we're going to be okay against the Manaphy. Z-Rain Dance is something that I'm, I'm fearing, but he is going to bring in the Sylveon right here. Uh, I still need this Blastoise to somewhat check his Skarmory um, and to keep it from getting up rocks consistently because my Thunderous is a big win con here. 
So I think I'm just going to straight switch out into my Metagross. Um, the problem is, if his Skarmory catches a Wish, I'm in a bad spot. So I think I just have to Scald. I think that's my play. Just Scald. We're just going to get off some damage. I'm not too heavily special attack invested. I'm only 36 modest. He is going to go for the Wish. The question is, does he protect, protect here? Uh, enabling himself to live after the burn. He's just below 25%. How much am I doing to Sylveon in general? Uh, Sylveon, a standard set with Blastoise, Scald. Um, 26 to 31. So he might protect. I doubt it, though. Um, Alright, we're going to switch out into Metagross. Because I can always switch out into Thunderous on the Skarmory. If it does catch the Wish. And if this Sylveon stays low, then I should be able to close combat sweep him later on. So he's going to go for the Heal Bell to heal up his uh, Sylveon, which is fine. Uh, now his Skarmory, I think was at about 60% and it was Rocky Helmet. And we did more than that with Thunder Punch. So it comes down to this predic uh, prediction right here. Do I Thunder Punch? I know he's Wish Protect, Heal Bell, uh, Hyper Voice. It's the only thing that makes sense. So he's going to get back a little bit of health. He doesn't have Hazard Removal on his Skarmory, which is something to note or more than likely doesn't have hazard removal because of the fact that we saw Sand Slash have spin. So I think I'm pretty safe to just throw out a Thunder Punch here. If he predicts that and wishes, then good on him. But I do expect the Skarm to come in. Uh, now the Skarm can come in regardless. That's the issue here. The Skarm can come in regardless of what move I click because it's faster than my Metagross. But I don't know if he knows if he's faster than my Blastoise. So, we can play off that a little bit. Um, is Thunder Punch just the correct play regardless? No, I think Stealth Rocks is the correct play, because the only thing that takes heavy damage from Stealth Rocks at this point is going to be my Thunderous, and I can always switch that in on his Skarm. I also forgot to get rid of Sand Slash. You guys are probably, like, freaking out right now. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get rid of Sand Slash real quick. There we go. All right, so Sand Slash is dead. Um, Skarm's at about 60. Sylveon's back up to 75. So, I think just Rocks. Yeah, we're just going to Stealth Rock here. As he's going to withdraw, he's probably going into Skarm. It doesn't catch a Wish, though. That's fine. As he is going to go into it here. And uh, he doesn't have an Electric Immunity anymore, so that's nice. We are going to get up these Rocks. And uh, I'm going to prevent his Manaphy from coming in, essentially. Uh, by going directly into my Thunderous on this thing. So let's do that. Uh, switch into Thunderous, which is now at 75%. I'm going to go into it. It still has three more Stealth Rock switchins, regardless, so that's fine. Alright, so we're going to get out of here. We're going to go into Eneru on his Skarm. Uh, his Sylveon doesn't switch in safely because rocks are up. One and two, uh, I have Sludge Wave. So I should be able to deal with the Skarm, uh, the, with the uh, Sylveon to some extent. So we are just going to T-Bolt on this turn. He doesn't have good switchins to this. And if his Skarm goes down, then we can get rid of the rocks for good when we come in on Sylveon with Blastoise. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. As we are just going to throw out a Thunderbolt. I did throw one out last time on the Sand Slash. I could have prevented the spin altogether by going for uh, for a Hidden Power Ice, predicting him to not want to stay in with Skarm. But now he doesn't have good switch-ins to this. So, like, Tauros is going to take a lot. Sylveon should get uh, O-Code by... Thun well, not O-Code, but killed by uh, Thunderbolt into Sludge Wave, essentially. Uh, Thunderous, let's see, uh, 29, and then, uh, Sludge Wave does 36 to 44, so yeah, it should be good, because it left at 75%, and it takes rocks. So he's gonna withdraw, he is gonna go into his, um, into his Sylveon here, he's gonna catch Thunderbolt, and rocks, so this is gonna be nice. Let's see how much this does, as, uh, that's gonna do a solid amount, um, Sludge Wave... Might be able to pick up the kill here. 44%. He's at 45, actually. That's kind of bad. Um, so, I really don't want to catch a Hyper Voice, though. Because this thing is a big win con right now. Alright, so we're going to go for the Sludge Wave. Uh, I don't think Sylveon can knock me out. No, it does 56% max. So if he gets a little bit of a low roll, I could actually be in, uh, in decent territory to switch in one more time. So we're just going to go for the Sludge Wave. Right here. I'm not a Zemon, he knows that. And uh, we're going to get off this Sludge Wave. Big damage. And we're almost going to knock out the uh, Sylveon, but not enough. Just not enough. 
All right, he's going to go for the wish. He's got wish passing on deck. And uh, he's going to get a little bit of leftovers recovery. And I think I'm going to hard switch into... Because he should... Um, 5, 10. Yeah, he dies to rocks. So... Um, we're going to switch out into Metagross here. Because he has to protect. He doesn't have a choice. So we're going to switch. We're going to go into Metagross. Very nice. So, uh, Infernape still deals with the majority of his team at this point. I doubt he'd switch into Skarmory. Uh, I don't see why he would. And I can just get out of here. I know he would more than likely protect on this turn. So, let's see what he does. Uh, if he switches out, then his, uh, his Sylveon's dead, which is not bad at all. Because I can lock myself into close combat later. As we do get our Metagross in against the Sylveon, he is going to go for what? He is going to go for Hyper Voice. Okay, so as I expected. Alright, so he's going to get his Wish for free. I could have killed this Sylveon off, but it's fine. As uh, we're still decently healthy. And again, Skarm can come in for free, but um, like it still takes a Thunder Punch. I'm going to take Rocky Helmet damage, but that's fine. I don't mind that. As he's going to get a Wish... And uh, the thing he could do is switch into his Tauros now, which is a little bit scary. But I think we're just going to Thunder Punch. He might think that I don't have anything to hit him, because I haven't revealed Meteor Mash yet. But I'm just going to go for T-Punch. Get a big hit off on Skarm. I doubt he'd stay in. I've shown Light Screen, I've shown... Uh, I haven't shown Meteor Mash, but I've shown Light Screen. He can't do damage to me. Uh, I'm, he might not have Protect, is what I'm thinking. He might actually not have Protect, because he hasn't shown it yet, and uh, he hasn't wanted to switch out of his Sylveon when the Wish is up, so that's interesting. We are going to go for the T-Punch here. Um, I can always switch in on Skarm and just Rapid Spin, because I am slower with Blastoise, so I can still get rid of Rocks at this point. Let's see what he does. He's going to withdraw. I'm assuming he's going into Skarm. Uh, he actually switches out into his Manaphy. Okay, so we catch this thing with a T-Punch. Not bad at all. Alright, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> T-Punch on the Manaphy. It's not Wakan Berry. We know that now. And that does look like a, t a two-hit KO. He is Leftovers. Um, if I bring this thing down into Flare Blitz range, I essentially win. As long as his Tauros isn't Scarfed. Which I don't think it can be because of the damage on Blair. So, Yeah. Um, let me see Adam and Scarf Tauros, how much it does to my, um, whoops, how much it does to my, uh, Umbreon. If he's adamant, no life orb, but still sheer force, uh, versus my Umbreon, uh, Blair with Rock Climb. Rock Climb. 41 to 49, so he would have never been able to take me out from where I was. Impossible. So, he's not Scarfed. So yeah, I think I just go for T-Punch here. Um, if he gets up the Z-Rain Dance, I think he's still in range of the... I am pretty sure he's still in range. Uh, Surf's not going to do much. It's going to do like 25 to 30. Um, I think he's still in range of the... Um, of the Mock Punch, which is what I'm hoping. As uh, Manaphy's going to drop, so one of the biggest threats to our team is gone. We know that Tauros is not Scarfed. And I still have Mock Punch on deck. So, Skarmory seems to be not so physically defensive either. So I just want to see something. Skarmory, even with max defense, how does it take Infernape's close combat? Um, 29 to 35, so it might drop after two. All right, so he's going to go into Skarm. Um, do I have a reason not to get up a light screen here? What is Skarm going to do to me? It's not going to do much. I think I just light screen and hope... Because he might roost, so there's no point in uh, attacking him with Thunder Punch. That makes no sense. So we're just going to go for the Light Screen. Let's see what he does. Uh, this is actually a speed tie, it seems. It seems. As he's going to go for a Whirlwind, which is pretty much what I expected. So as long as he doesn't get... Uh, actually, anything he gets is fine. This is fine. This is cool. Because I think he's... Uh, I'm, I'm faster than this, actually. I am faster than this. Because we just speed tied. Oh, no, no, he went for Whirlwind, excuse me. He's slower than me because he went for Whirlwind, but I'm slower than him with Blastoise. So I'm just going to go for the Rapid Spin here. Try to get rid of these rocks. He can't set them up again, which is nice. So let's see what he does. 
We are going to get off these rocks. Of course, he's going to take zero damage from that. Uh, I'm going to take a lot of Rocky Helmet recoil. Uh, he's going to go for Whirlwind again. That's fine. As he's going to get in my... My Metagross. Okay, so not the best. Um, however, once again, I can just hard switch into my Thunderous, which threatens him immensely. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, as long as I get in my Thunderous, I'm fine. Yep, so switch that in. And if he keeps this in, then uh, Sylveon is obviously at risk of dying to T-Bolt uh, and Sludge Wave once again. So there's always that. His Manaphy is gone. I gotta get rid of that. Where are you, Manaphy? Um, so die. Alright, so he's only got three Mons left on my side. I gotta start chipping away some Mons here. Uh, Umbreon and Quillfish have gone. So all we're left with is these four. So we're gonna get in our Thunderous on the rocks once again. Very nice. Very, very nice. Blastoise can still come in one more time on, um, on Sylveon, by the way. It still has the capability of doing so. So we are going to just Thunderbolt, I believe. I can also Volt Switch. Volt Switch doesn't lose me much because... Well, no. No, no, no. Hold on. Um... Alright, close combat, close combat. Nah, I'm just gonna Thunderbolt. Just Thunderbolt. Alright, so we're gonna knock out the Skarm, which is nice. As now, I think he's going to bring in his... Um... So Skarmory's dead. I think he's gonna bring in his Tauros. It's the only thing that makes sense, right here. He's actually going to bring in his Sylveon, surprisingly. Alright. Uh, he wants to risk the 2 at KO. He doesn't have his Rocky Helmet anymore, so... I'm just going to Sludge Wave twice. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to Sludge Wave into Volt. That's going to be my play. So Sludge Wave. Catch the Sylveon. I still have a lot of my members alive. We're just going to Sludge Wave here. He might be tempted to just Hyper Voice, in which case he would leave himself in range of Thunderbolt, and Tauros can't switch in on that. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just bring in Infernape and close combat that thing. So, that should be game. I think we got this, guys. I think we got our very first game. Let's go. Let's go! Ah, <laughs> oh, this is looking good. Um, I'm sad that I lost Quillfish so early that I wasn't able to get up a T-Spike, but he did have Heal Bell on his Sylveon ultimately. So it didn't make a huge difference. So we are going to go for the Sludge Wave here. Uh, get off some nice damage on this uh, Sylveon. And he's going to go for Wish. And I think I always Volt Switch here. Because it should be able to knock out the uh, Sylveon. Sylveon. From Thunderous. Uh, default sets. And a row. Volt Switch does 23 to 28. He is at 15%. Or just above. 16. So yeah, I think we, uh, I think we just click Volt. Because we should be able to knock this thing out. He is going to switch out. Awesome. And he's going to catch the Wish with his, uh, with his Tauros. But that's fine because I do have my, um, I do have my Infernape. Which outspeeds this because he's not Scarfed. Going to get off a huge amount of damage right there. Now he could be Sashed. If the Wish happens to bring him back up to full, what I'm going to do is U-turn. I'm always going to U-turn. So we're going to go into Ace. We know that he's not Scarfed. I count Adamant Scarf, Rock Climb, Sheer Force onto my uh, Umbreon. It should never do over half. And uh, so we should be good. Let's see how much he gets from this Wish. He is not at full, so we can spam Close Combat. Let's go for it. I am confident right here. Uh, unless he is Chopple, but I doubt he's Chopple. Uh, because the damage, once again, on Umbreon uh, pretty much... Confirms that he should be a boosting item. So we're just gonna go for close combat here We are gonna outspeed this Tauros and we are gonna knock it out with the close combat and close combat to Sylveon should be able to pick up the kill And uh, I think that's gonna be game guys. <laughs> that's it All right, I think we get a 4-0 over Papa C and his New York clinks I just want to count this damage just to make sure Infernape ace close combat does a min of 30% he is at like three so we are clicking close combat again. We do not care. And we are knocking out this Sylveon. GG, friend. Just going to tell him GG. And uh, that's going to be the first game for the Montreal Habsols. We do knock out the Sylveon as well as the uh, Tauros. Where the heck are you? Let me get you off the, uh, off the layout here. That is a 4-0 in our favor. We do win this one. 
And uh, I, I hope you guys like my little HP bar. If you uh, if you want to hit me up, it's uh, it's five dollars, five dollars for that HP bar. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'll give it to anybody that wants it. But yes, we would like to save this battle video. And that's gonna wrap it up, guys. That is our week one of the GBA D League. We do take it 4-0 over Papa C and his New York Clinks. Uh, great start to the season. Um, there are some very very big opponents that I am not looking forward to playing. Uh, Jolt, Abe, uh, even Dan, Greg, Leo. Leo's huge. Like oh my god. Uh, there's a lot of competition in this uh, in this league, so yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a tough one. But we do end up winning week one. So if you guys enjoyed, if you did like seeing us win, make sure to hit that like button down below. Make sure to check out my opponent in the uh, description down below as well. Go check out his side of the video. Uh, find out what his sets were. I'm really curious as well. I'm gonna be watching his side. I might even speak to him about it now. But uh, make sure to uh, subscribe. Excuse me if you guys haven't already. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.